Welcome back to Stake Insanity. Um, I'm David, and this is day 113 or something of my carnivore diet. Tonight, I want to talk about alcohol and drinking on the carnivore diet. Now, a lot of purists would probably say that alcohol is not allowed, and oddly, I'm one of them. Um, I think that it just feels, it just doesn't feel like it should be on the diet to me for some reason. And I mentioned this because last week I went out on Wednesday night, I had some drinks with some friends, and then Thursday night I had a glass of wine, and I pretty much considered that cheating. And at the time, we had a discussion after a few drinks, um, and somebody did a bit of Googling around, and we had a discussion, and we thought that basically tequila was kind of the only alcohol that you could drink that had no carbs. But I've done a little bit of research today, and in the uh, community section, I've actually already put um, the image that I'm going to show in the video. So if you want to ever use it or you want to see it, you can grab it from there um, instead of from the video. But basically, the image is just a, it's an infographic and it shows, um, it's just an alcohol cheat sheet is what it says. And it shows, you know, champagne has four grams, tequila zero, seltzer one gram, dry red wine, four grams, light beer, four grams, martini, one gram, bourbon, zero, vodka, zero. Um, so it's kind of interesting, I thought. I would have expected alcohol to have more carbs. Um, this isn't talking about calories. It's just talking about carbs. And I found another table, which I might, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a link to this stuff in the, sh in the show notes as well. But looking purely at carbs, rum, vodka, gin, tequila, and whiskey of all types have zero carbs. If you get something like a mixed drink, like a flavored martini or a Cosmo, you're looking at like 6.6 .6 grams. A Bloody Mary has 5.7. Red wine, 3.9. White wine, 3.9. Light beer, anywhere between 2.6 and 5.9 grams. So really, they're all quite low if you have one drink. The problem comes with the things that you mix it with. If you can just sit and have a glass of whiskey with a cube of ice, you're fine from a carb standpoint. And I mean, that's fine. If you can have neat tequila or vodka, any of that stuff, if you just have it straight, you're totally fine. The problem is when you start mixing it with stuff like Diet Cokes or ginger ale or seltzer or carbonated water or tonic, like a gin and tonic would be basically zero grams of carbs. So again, the problem is it's partly what you mix it with, but the other part of it is after having a drink, it sort of lowers your resolve or your discipline, I think, and then it makes it easy. So you may know what you want to do. You want to eat this way. You want to be this way. But if you struggle at all with eating carbs or like potatoes or biscuits or cookies or whatever, pizza, what you might find if you go out and you have a few drinks is that all of a sudden your sort of willpower is lower and you just start to think, oh, well, it's all right if I just, I can just have a, I can have a bite. And then you have a bite and then you have a couple of bites and then you're having some more drinks and then you're thinking, oh man, this tastes really good. You know, and a pizza would be really nice or something. And then the next thing you know, you, you're you totally off the wagon on the diet from the diet perspective. And I think that, I think that's the biggest risk. And even when I went out the other night, I had a few drinks. And as I said in my other video, I had a few drinks but I went and had a steak and I did have a margarita. So, you know, I had a bunch of mixers with it, which, which has carbs in it, but I did, I ate some 
chips and I ate some spinach. Not because I necessarily wanted to, but just because I was, I think I was already in that mindset of, well, I've, I'm kind of off the diet already. My willpower was a little bit lower. So I ended up having a few bites. Now, I didn't go eat a whole pizza. I didn't go and eat a box of Pop-Tarts. I didn't, you know, grab a bar of chocolate and eat the whole thing. So it, it wasn't like I slipped up badly, but I could see if I were drinking all the time where that could happen. And so I think it's probably safest just to stay away from alcohol um, just because it, I think it makes it harder to stay on the diet. That's the, that's the main thing. But I, I wanted to come back on this because I was actually really surprised. I thought that a lot of, a lot of those alcohols would have, certainly would have some carbs in it, but it seems if you just have them neat, they're totally fine. Like I said, red wine, white wine, if you have one small glass, you know, I mean, yes. Okay. If you're being ultra, ultra strict, then yes, alcohol's off the diet. But if, if you're experimenting and you're trying like me and you're doing it for elimination to try and see what you can have and not really for diet purposes and not really to lose weight, like I'm, again, I'm, that, that's not the point of what I'm doing. Um, and it doesn't matter. I just decided I was going to have a drink. So, um, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. So short video tonight. I just wanted to share that. I have another idea for another video, which ties into um, the the physical, the the carb, the the how I felt when I went to the gym after I'd had some alcohol and I'd had a few carbs and some other stuff to eat that was not really particularly on the diet either and what the impact of that was. So I'm going to come back and talk about that at a separate time in the, in the next video. One other thing that's happened today though, is that on, so today's Monday. So yesterday was the London marathon and I sat at home in the morning and I watched probably four hours of the show and I couldn't help thinking that I really want to do that. And if you've been watching any of this, you've heard me talk loads of times about how, you know, before I lost a bunch of weight, I got up to the point where I'd actually done a half marathon. I was training and then I got COVID and it set me back. And then I got COVID and it, again for a second time. And then that set me back again. And then I just got frustrated and just basically stopped running and really stopped training. So I've essentially had to not quite start over from scratch, but I have had to start over and I've really been struggling to go to the gym. And I, what I've realized, I think just in the past 24 hours is that the reason I'm struggling in the gym is because I don't have a goal. When I was training before I had a goal and I, I knew I wanted to run a half marathon. And so that was my goal. And I found a half marathon that I wanted to run that I thought would be like the easiest one I could totally find because Cambridge is flat. I, th I think there's about 400 feet of like, that's the highest hill in Cambridge is only about 400 feet higher than anywhere else. So it's like the flattest, it's the flattest run I could find. And cool. I did it. I did it. And I was proud of myself and that was amazing. But since then I've kind of been drifting because it's like I've done that and I'd kind of convinced myself I'd always said nah you know I don't want to do a marathon don't want to do a marathon but what I realized from watching it is a I could definitely do that and b I kind of want to because I I need that goal I need something to train for and so I, I signed up for the lottery so chances are I won't get in through the lottery, but we'll see whenever they do the draw. And if I don't get in through the normal lottery and just get a place, then I'll sign up with one of the charities and I'll, I'll get in that way. It was, I think this year they had half a million people go into the lottery pool. And I think they give away about 17,000 spot. So that's like one in 38. You've got a one in 38 chance of getting a spot. And then after that, 
yeah, you just have to you have to find some charity to sign up for and and run with the charity, and you can usually get in that way. And if you raise enough money, then you get a spot, and you can run. So, I now have a goal, which is excellent, and I've got it's it's actually given me a whole. It's it's given me more motivation, but it's also given me a good plan <clears throat> on how what I want to train for, how I want to train. So the exercises that I do and the way that I do them and the way that I now do my cardio and how I do my running. So I now have a plan, which is excellent. And I already feel better. So I didn't really particularly feel like going to the gym today, but I went because I'm like, right, okay, I need to start training. Even though it's a year away and it's too far, I need, I know for myself that I need to have a good base level of fitness before I can even start the marathon training, you know, which is a start really starts a few months out. So what I would like to do is I'd like to get to the point where at least by the autumn, I can run a half marathon again. So I might try and find a half marathon around October time. And that way that will give me a, a good marker to say, okay, well, if by, you know, if by then I can run a half and I can finish the half and not be dead at the end of the half. Because basically, if you can run a half, you can run a full marathon. Like, you can. So that will just settle my mind a little bit, and then it'll be just getting myself ready to go. So anyway, between now and then, you'll probably hear some news as my training goes along, and you'll hear some news on whether I go through on the lottery and all the other stuff. So I just wanted to mention that tonight as well. And that's it for me. So yeah, if, if you want that graphic about the drinks and stuff that I showed during the video, then you can go to the community tab and I put a post there and I think you can probably just download it from there. Um, and if not, just put a comment in and I'll send it to you or something. But anyway, that's it for today. We're going to talk about carb loading next. Um, and that'll be in the next couple of days. I have some, I have a lot of client work I've got to get out. So it'll probably be a day or two for the next video. But until then, everybody have a good time on the diet. Hope you all stick to it and we will see you soon. Good night.